What's going on, everybody? We got a special edition of the Blazers Edge podcast this week. I'm joined by Trailblazer Swingman, free agent acquisition, Derek Jones Jr. Take a look at some listener questions, how he's going to fit on this team, his defensive versatility, uh, how just ridiculous of a lob target he's going to be, uh, his relationship and looking forward to working with guys like Dame and CJ and Carmelo Anthony. All in all, this is a really fun podcast. I really hope you guys enjoy it. So please like, rate, review, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. And let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Blazers Edge podcast. I am your host, Danny Morang. And, you know, we've been cycling through some, some guest hosts, uh, working some guests in as we get ready for the season. No more important than, well, Blazers free agent acquisition, former Miami Heat, former Phoenix Sun, all around good dude, airplane mode himself at the real Derek Jones, real D Jones, excuse me, Derek Jones Jr., DJ D. What's going on, man? Man, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Now, we're going to get right into it real quick just because uh, you just got to town. You've been flipped around, turned around, upside down, <laughs> and you're already back hooping. What has this been like? for you to go through this whole process, go through free agency in a day, move across country, new team, new teammates, COVID, everything. Man, it's crazy. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> it was just, I mean, it was, for my family, it was, I just I just wanted to make it as smooth as possible for my family, my kids, you know, my girl and everything. Cause it's not only me moving, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's everybody moving. So I can't just sit up there and say, all right, I'm gonna just pack my stuff and go. I gotta pack everybody's stuff. We gotta pack up the house. I gotta do a whole bunch of stuff. So it, it was crazy for us. What's been the the weirdest, strangest thing that just kind of stood out in the whole process? It could be something big, something little, but I mean, I have to imagine going from Miami to Portland, but again, what did you know about Portland the city before you got here? It's Nike Town, really. That's all I know. <laughs> but other than that, nah. I mean, I'm a I'm a Puma guy right now, so it's like. Uh, hey, there you go. Yeah. So. So, not real familiar with being out here, other than coming out here and, and playing originally. What's been you know the last 48, 72 hours like for you, kind of getting in, getting back, or at least getting on the court with these guys for the first time? Great. Um, I, being out here with these guys is just. I mean, it's it was like I it was like I just walked into a great environment for me personally because it's like all the guys open they they embraced me with open arms you know talking to Dame CJ Carmelo I mean just just breaking down everything that I can the plays and just just the actions that's going on in the game just so I can you know make my process a little bit faster so I wouldn't have to sit up there I mean we we play real soon so it ain't it ain't like, you know, we, ain't, we got games <laughs> like two months from now. So we got we to get it right on our high horse. So you said you talked to Dame, you talked to Mello. I want to know, have you, uh, for those listening on the podcast, you're going to reach out and check out the video. I'll have it in the, I'll have it in the post uh, as well up on the YouTube page. Portland uh, v. Miami this year, you and Mello went back and forth at it in three straight possessions. He tried to back you down. You weren't having it. He came up short. He came back down, took you on the other block, and hit you with that that seventeen year post moves. Just just back to down, back to down, back to down. But you kind of looked him up and down, and then the next possession, you caught and banged on the whole team ruthlessly. <laughs> I want to know: Have you guys discussed what happened on that play, that series of plays? You guys ever gone back and forth about that? Because that was. In that game, the the intensity ratcheted up in those two three minutes, and pretty much that that entire night, because that was one of your best games of the season, hands down. Yeah, yeah, and nah, I we ain't talk about it really. I mean, I that's plays that we, yeah, you know, it's just basketball, you know. It's mm -hmm. mellow being mellow. He he's a great player, great one on one player, great team player. So it's like, you know, when you got the ball in his hands, it ain't like it's. If something bad gonna happen, you're gonna get a great look every single time. So, I mean, him, him being him and me being me, I ain't gonna never back down from no challenge. So, I'm going out there. If I gotta, if I gotta guard Dane, CJ, and Melo at the same time, I'm gonna try to do it. Which is good because we're gonna get into a little bit of video talking about your defensive versatility. And actually, two of the clips that I have are from that game of you on Dame picking Dame up at about 
40, 45 feet, which is not something a lot of guys typically do and live to tell, tell tales. He usually cooks guys when they pick them up that far out. Uh, but you, you played trail defense on him probably better than anybody I saw this year using your length, using the athleticism. You've got unique tools that allow, allow you to, to, to bother him probably more than most guys do in the league. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I want to go back to where you came from, not in Phoenix, but Miami. Mm-hmm. And one of the questions that I have from uh, at Milo does is what have you learned about leadership and culture from that playoff run, being around Jimmy, Spo? <laughs> Pat Riley and that leadership and that style that they, they built in Miami and that deep run you guys had last year. Uh, I mean, the main thing I, I've learned is that, you know, is is leadership doesn't have an age, you know, you can, you can be a leader from day one of stepping into this league. You know, it can take you three, four or five years, but you know, leadership, it doesn't, it doesn't have an age. And, you know, when I was in Miami, I, 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 I became a, a ultimate gym rat. So it was like, me, me being here is it's even better for me. It ain't, it is. There's nothing out here, like no nightlife. It ain't like how it is in Miami. So, this is the perfect place for me. I can stay in the gym and, and be with my family. Yeah, Portland is definitely a place if you want to uh, have little distractions. I saw uh, Demar Derozan, you you know USC guy, fight on, you know, um, but also LA dude, right? So mm-hmm. he took himself to Montana to not have the distractions in the off season. Now we aren't Bozeman, Montana, but Portland is mostly distraction free. If you want it to be, that's, I, I yeah. think it, it's not, you, you don't have live uh, <laughs> out there on the strip, get, cutting it up in Miami. Uh, it's a little bit of a different life. I'm sure you've, you've picked up on uh, even uh, in, in COVID times when we're all staying in uh, there's still not a whole lot of options in Portland. Um I, you, you hit on something there as far as the, the leadership not having an age. And this is from Steve DeWall, one of the questions I was telling you about earlier. Um, you and, and, and Cove, Robert Covington, mm-hmm. are basically two of the biggest G League success stories that there are. And now you guys are going to be on the same team and basically in the same starting lineup uh, as we, we get out there. When you look back, I mean, you're still a young dude, but you've, you've already had so much experience coming through the ranks what would you tell those guys that are in the G League that are grinding now? What are the things that you learned, both good and bad, that you would kind of try to impart to those guys now? Uh, I mean, like, like I've been telling everybody, I mean, since I got to this league, I, once I got down to the G League, I realized this, it was it was built for me, honestly, because it's a doggy dog world. Everybody, every day, every second that they are on the floor, they trying to take your head off. Like they they not going out there to play games with you, and they don't care who you are, what name you got behind you. It doesn't matter. Like they coming out there to to get themselves a job, and whatever it takes to get that job, they gonna try to get it done. So you know, one thing I I, I just tell the people that's in the G League right now, and you know, young players coming up in the ranks is go out there and and give it everything that you got. Like don't don't hold nothing back. Go out there and by the time that that clock hit zeros and, and it's the end of the game, you 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 on the ground trying to catch air because you're tired. <laughs> like that that's how hard you got to play. Because if you're not, somebody else will. And if you matched up across from that person, they're gonna get the best of you. And if it's between you and him and the contract, he got that. Just because that one game you decided to give it ninety five percent instead of giving it a hundred and ten. And he gave it 110 and took everything that you wanted. So just keep working every single day that you're on the floor. Just try to give it everything that you got. So when you look at that and you take that kind of mindset, that that mentality, and you project it forward, I, I, I'm hesitant to ask this question because I've asked plenty of guys to do this, and it's, it's whoever. The answer is inevitably, inevitably, who's ever in front of me. But this is a question from uh, Lando Commando. Who do you love the challenge of guarding? Basically, I'm asking for you for names, Derek. Who do you love going up against? And, and not, not, to, not to gas anybody up or, or to slander them, but like, who are the guys that you like, this is my challenge. This is, this is a guy he got me last time, or we've had some good head-to-heads, or, or a guy you, you want to take on uh, in those, those one-on-one situations like you're talking about when you want to be that guy that gives that 110%. 
Shit. Before I got here, it was Damon CJ. <laughs> to me, I mean, to me, those, those two is arguably two of the hardest people to guard in this league. You get up too close on Dame, he's athletic enough to get by you and finish at the rim. You you sag back, he gonna shoot it right over your head. If you try to play too close on CJ, he gonna get in his bag and, and start doing what he wanna do to you. <laughs> so it's like, those is the two people. I mean, I, I, I've like, every time we played Portland, it was like, I'm, I'm focusing on this one. Like I need to make sure that they don't do nothing. Like if they don't do nothing, I did my job. But you know, it's it's basketball. You know, sometimes they're gonna get the best of you. It is what it is. But you know, that's that, that's two people that I, I I wanted to play every single day. Well, speaking of, so I wanted to kind of highlight for for those that aren't familiar, you know, East Coast, West Coast, Portland fans. I mean, they love their team, but a lot of times they're not gonna get a chance to watch every single game. You know, on, on League Pass like me every night, and. This was from that game when you really showed basically your entire bag. You caught in the short roll, finished as the, as the dunker. Uh, you, you switched across the lineup, played up, again, up on Mello down on the low block, picked Dame up at 40. And this is where I really wanted to show what your length, your athleticism, your versatility, uh, your doggedness really. Uh, I think that's the, the term that I would use to describe both you and that Miami team one of the few teams that decided you were going to extend your defense on Dame and, and really pressure him as soon as he crossed half court. And if we, if we roll this forward, you guys right here, I, I believe it's none. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. You guys hard trap immediately off the one four with him, with Damon Mello and you string him out almost a half court and it puts your defense in rotation. Mello's the guy here. This is again, this is after the possessions when you, you would just banged on basically the entire team. So I, I know you were feeling yourself a little bit, but you get back. I'm going to run this back a little bit for everybody else to see this. You get back from damn near 45 and you are hauling to get back to Kent to get in between that passing lane and deny that Myers is coming down. And I think that's Tyler on the backside, making sure there's no action there. But it's just it's a simple play that results in a contested mid-range jumper. But every bit of that came off the fact that you were willing to extend and push and take Damian Lillard away from the bread and butter play. Like when you're going through your scouting report, when you're looking at a play like that, ultimately, what what do you think your skill set, what do you think your 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 mindset, your your determination, how does that all impact on a night-to-night basis when you are able to do those kind of things? And hopefully, you know, translate them here to Portland this year. Yeah, of course. I mean, I just like I said, every 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 game, every second that I'm on the floor, I'm I'm trying to make sure that my man don't score and my team is scoring than up than up than the uh, the opponent. So if I if I make sure that as soon as he come off that screen, I'm blitzing and he's retreat dribbling, trying to get back and and then make a pass out of that. Then I did my job. I made sure that he got the ball out of his hands. If I get the ball out of his hands, I'm not letting him get it back. This is again what we're talking about. Some of the the versatility that you have here. You get caught here in the short roll, and instead of recovering back out to Seth, Tyler tags gets back out to Seth Curry, and you're rolling with seven foot three KP, and you get up here and break up the play. Now, I know KP doesn't have your bunnies, but how on earth are you able to get here and get back and intercept this on a short roll? Like, that's that can't be easy, man. <laughs> uh, see, my job is if I'm guarding the pick and roll, like I'm on the ball, my job is to make sure he gets over that screen. Don't let him reject. Don't let him do none of the little tricks he want to do. But if I'm the big and I'm 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 like I'm zoning the screen, my job is to make the guard pick up the ball. As soon as he pick up the ball, there's nothing else he could do. My man is come, my teammates coming right back into the play. He try to shoot a jump shot. That's a contest. He try to lay it up. I'm right there. You try to pass it off. I'm still right there. So it's like you got to pick your poison on what you want to do. <laughs> the last one I wanted to bring here, and this was this was what the the play I, I was talking about. I don't think Dame gets enough credit for his athleticism, for his ability to take on off the bounce. He's he's not like Ja or Russ or 
or CP3 in his prime where it's that one step burst that you're like, dear God, how am I going to keep up with him? But he has that left to right split and his right to left through the leg. And he's able to accelerate probably faster than just about anybody in the league. And that's the one thing that I think that sets Dame apart. Am, am I wrong in that, in that perception? Not at all. So he so, beat me. You see the play, bro. He he beat me. I just recovered. I'm just, yeah, I'm just athletic enough to get back. Mm -hmm. You know, you already know where I'm going with this play. You you got there and you actually did this to Dame twice in this game. You you got him. He got you here with that left to right where he gets that shoulder in front. But because of your athletic, because of your athleticism, because of your length, you're able to track and and get that hand in there. And something I've noticed between both you and and Rocco is that both you guys are really 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 active with your hands and not in the traditional wave your hand sense you know just to look active you're smart active with your hands and reading passing lanes reading eyes kind of that free safety but on drives you both got that knack to get that straight knockdown to get that, that ball jarred loose without drawing that foul. Is that something that you actively work on? Is that just something that just feels normal to you? How does that kind of thing progress for you? I mean, for me, it's it's kind of normal now. I, I've been doing it since I was in Phoenix because, I mean, the vets that I had, you know, I had savvy vets. They wasn't, like, athletic like me. It was, like, my vet was P.J. Tucker, Jerry Dudley. It ain't like they was, like, getting above the rim every mm -hmm. single play. So when I'm going against them, my first couple weeks there, I'm trying to draw the ball and, and go for a layup. And all of a sudden, Dud smacking the ball out of my hand, PJ smacking the ball out of my hand. And it's like, I'm I, like, you want to call foul, but it's like, that's not a foul. So mm -hmm. it's like, at the same time, I'm, I'm taking notes. Like, <laughs> little do they know I'm taking notes. So as soon as you try to do that to me, I'm taking the ball from you. <laughs> So those are the little things that you pick up on early in your career that you're, you're, you're emphasizing that you, you know, you're kind of driving home the same thing with that, that determination, that, 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 which got you out of the G league, which got you your opportunity in Miami, which ultimately got you your contract and your deal here in Portland. And this is, man, I, I, excuse these Twitter handles, man, but this is from at dry age sirloin, David, you, it was mentioned from the New York times article that his experience of free agency uh, that you're looking to expand your offensive responsibilities. What area of, the, of your game do you think you don't get enough credit for? And then I'm going to add to that. What do you want to continue building on? Everything. I mean, and my game is when I was when I was in Miami, I was set to a certain role, and I mean, I just, that was a role that made the team successful, and I'm I'm glad I was able to play a part in that success for the team that I was just playing on, but. You know, as a as a basketball player and as a human being, you want to be better, and you know you you won't accept less than what you know that you're worth. And I wanted to go out there and, and be able to not only impact defensively, but you know while I'm on the floor and I'm impacting defensively, I want to have the freedom to be able to play and be a basketball player, and not just set screens and roll to the rim. Like that's I'm not my game. Like I'm way more. <laughs> You can do more than that, is what you're saying. And of course. And you, and again, I, the game against Portland with Miami, I, th I thought showed a lot of that where you were, again, catching on the short roll, where you were knocking down. I think you took like an 18-footer at the end of the clock with more arc than anybody not named Al Farouk Aminu, uh, just because you had to let it go. And I could tell after you hit that shot, because that one was early in the game, that you, you had kind of built up a little bit of swagger, a little bit of confidence when – when you look at your game, when you analyze your game, do you see yourself as a confidence guy? Like you've got your, your base level where you're, in, you know, where you can perform, but when you start making a couple of those plays, do you kind of just feel your, your level of play go up a notch every single time you do it? I mean, when I was in Miami, yeah. I mean, now I, there's no lacking confidence at all. I mean, I've been, like I said, I've been talking to Dame. I've been talking to CJ. I've been talking to Melo. It's, those are the type of guys like they they're leading by example. Like they go out there and they show you how to do it, and they tell you every single day, "Don't doubt yourself." You know, they just go out there and play. If you go out there and play and you give it everything you got, then what you out there doubting yourself for? 
it ain't like you out there and you 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 BSing and, and, and giving them fifty percent. Like I'm not gonna doubt myself if I'm out there giving out hundred and ten percent, locking motherfuckers down and, and being me. So when you're looking at these guys, uh Dame, CJ, Mello, everybody up and down this roster, guys that you know, guys that you respect, you know. What is it that you want to bring on a night in, night out for this team? Like everybody knows that you're a, a, like a top 0.1% athlete, that you can get anywhere on the court, you can do anything, any you know, you want to do physically. Portland has been short, really, guys of, of your athleticism. Uh, honestly, I, I've said this really. You're the most athletic dude that Portland has not only had on their roster, but in their active roster in legitimately 20 years. They haven't had a guy who can go from basically two through five and be that dude and and be that energy guy. But you're more than that. So when you look at this team, you look at, again, that starting lineup. When you're playing off Dame, CJ, uh, Cove, Nurk, where do you find your role in that? What, what What do you want to do and what do you hope to do? I mean, I just want to play basketball free I mean, <laughs> with no chains. So that's, that's, and that's the, that's the, that's the type system that I'm playing in right now. You know, it's just, I'm going out there every day is, I mean, we have set plays and we have everything that we have, but at the end of the day, we all hoopers, you know, not, not every play is going to work perfect. You have to be able to, to tre- create something for yourself or do something for someone else. So I've got to ask you this because I love Dame. I, I call him the second best and probably the, the second most valuable trailblazer in the history of this friend. I mean, just he's that dude. But if I have one criticism of Dame, one, it's, it's just this one, and it pertains to you specifically because Dame may be the worst lob passing point guard, star point guard I've ever seen. And I love Dame, but he's never had somebody like you. So I'm hoping you're gonna you're gonna bring that out in him, where he's gonna find you on all those backdoor cuts. Are you guys are you guys able to like work with each other yet on the floor and work on that timing? See, that's the thing, but I ain't timing in the past. It don't matter for me. Have you seen? <laughs> Just get it near. Everybody's seen the pass that Bam threw me versus Toronto. I I, I literally have it right here. We I, that I'm, I'm gonna work into it. Arguably one of the worst, best passes that I've ever seen in my life. So it's like, it was a bad pass, but it was so good that it just was because crazy. the angle that it puts you at. Yeah. So it's like, it don't, for me, I told them, it don't matter where you put the ball. You put the ball anywhere between the rim and the back, like the little side of the backboard. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody jumping with me to get up there. <laughs> so I, that's, I a, that's the kind of confidence I, I want to hear. Because... Here's the thing. I know Nurk will find you, and I know because oh, he, he, he. Will, I'm assuming you, you already know he's gonna throw you. If he sees you, he's gonna throw you open, right? He done threw a bunch of back doors on me, so I know he's gonna throw it to me. It ain't. <laughs> I ain't worried about that. So that, that's the thing. I, I think you're gonna fit in tremendously. Uh, either coming in the short corner, working in a dunker spot, coming off down screens. And the thing is, I, a lot of people kept asking me about this, and, I, and I, I'm sure you get this all the time. Your, your, your jump shot from three has been inconsistent, but you've shown the proclivity to, to improve that. Your free throw percentage has come up. You've shown, that, especially above the break from the three-point line, you can be a consistent shooter. Is that something like you, that you're really trying to hone in on, focus in on? Are you working with anybody specifically to, to, to focus on that? Like your three-point shot as a whole, wh- where do you see it now and what are you trying to do with it? From when I first came into the league, it's tremendously better. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, have, to, I have to give a lot of credit to my, my shooting coach when I was with Miami, Rob Froder. You know, I called him Shot Doc, so – he helped me with everything, really, you know, just just to keep my elbows in, just the way my feet are set, just everything, the arc of the ball. It's just he helped me so much that now it's like I, I already like I know everything about my jump shot. So whereas if I miss, I know why. And that's that's how I just think about it. I go in there. I, I try to take every shot with the same rep and make sure every rep is perfect or damn near. 
it's that's what I'm trying to be. I'm, I, I want to be able to be this space the floor, you know, hit shots, and if you close out, then that's you working to my advantage. Mm-hmm. I'm going to roll you back here to, to a little bit of defensive footage here again, because I, I want everybody else to be able to, to see the, the same things here uh, as we get towards the end of this, end of this section. This is what I was talking about early on. There aren't a lot of guys in the league that I've seen that will confidently sit down in front of Damian Lillard when he crosses half court. But again, this is from that same game. You came here, he hits you with that same left to right. And this is usually the spot right here when he gets it, it it's it's Deion Sanders you know if he's even he's leaving right exactly but you're able to with your length and versatility and your athleticism close this gap down and put Dame into a spot and get the block again now you got Dame's hand twice man come on now you can't be doing that <laughs> no I don't, I don't hit hands I hit the ball <laughs> all, all ball right but of when when I look at that, and I, I know you know what you're capable of. This is me showing everybody else what you're capable of, who, who may not know what you can do. When you look at that, that's got to feel good for you to know that as a defensive player, which, I mean, I can only imagine what it's like in today's NBA, how the game is called, how things are played, how difficult it must be to guard a guy like Damian Lillard in space coming downhill, who between him and Steph have kind of reinvented that position where their gravity is quite literally out to 40 feet. So when you're looking at a scouting report and now you're going against Dame in practice, well, when you guys maybe get to practice this year, I don't, I don't, know, how many, I don't know how many of those practices you're going to get this year. Um, but when you're looking at that and you, you've got, you know, an early trip uh, to Golden State where you guys are going to play Golden State in basically what, two games in three nights. Uh, on a road trip and that's of course after you play the lakers and clippers in two games in three nights that's going to be a fun trip for you guys <laughs> but when you look at that what does that do for you mentally your your confidence and you your ability to go in night in night out knowing that not only can i hang but i can excel with all nba guys yes it just it just shows me that i like my, all my hard work that i put in this is paying off now, all the early mornings and, and late nights of me and my dad going to, you don't know, the gym when I was 13 years old, 12 years old, it's, it all worked. And for me, it's, it's just a surreal moment when I got to have that conversation, I mean, a conversation with uh, the coach and the GM of the Blazers. You know, just being able to, to know that somebody actually wanted me. And they they wanted me for the reason of they wanted me to be me and, and become the player that I want to become. And they're giving me the, the confidence and the ability and just basically not like a green light, but it ain't red. So <laughs> I'm, I'm That's fine. a great way to put it, because how many guys in the league truly get a green light? Not a lot. So if, if you're at least getting the if you can if you can make it, take it light. I think most guys are, 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 are excited about that, right? Because if you prove you're, you're, you're worthy of that level of responsibility, then you might be able to take it to that next stage. Exactly. That's got to be incredibly freeing for you, right? To feel <laughs> like you, you can, you're going to be a part of something. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited for this. I, 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 like I told my agent, my manager, my family, you know, I, I can't wait. That get that first game, I can't wait. Like, like I'm like I'm sitting up here thinking about it every day. Like I can't wait. Like this is this is something I, I I've been waiting for, and I'm I'm glad I got it. Now I'm I'm about to show everybody what I can do. Oh, well, the only downside here is you're not going to have obviously fans in the building with COVID going on because I'm I'm certain that you would have gotten one of the most ridiculous ovations the first time you got out in transition. Uh, to be able to finish because this team I'll, I'll be honest this team has not had a guy in the rotation who is a night in night out dunker a transition finisher it's, it's what this team has lacked really for years don't get me wrong dame's got bunnies and okay let, that reminds me have you and Ant had a chance to, to kind of go back and back and forth at it 
Because no, nah, we don't. We, we ain't gonna. I don't. I don't think it's gonna be like that. You know, it's not gonna be like that because I mean, it, it might. It, I mean, if it comes <laughs> down to it, but you know, that's that's a guy like I've knew about Ant since he's in high school. Mm-hmm. So like, it's him jumping how he jumped. It's not nothing new to me. I already knew everything about him. Even when he came to Miami, he went baseline and took off with off two feet and dunked oh, it. Oh, Myers just talked to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> he mean, knew. It, he it, knew it, better it, to get out the way. Like he, like he is one of the people. Like, if you playing pickup, you just know. Like, don't jump. If you jump, then you you risking your health. You're gonna get like snatched. You, you you risking it. Like, like don't <laughs> risk it. Like, there's no point of risking that. Like, he's one of them people. If you want to jump with him, it's gonna he's gonna baptize you. <laughs> See, that's that's what I'm looking forward to. Is you two running in transition and, and taking advantage of opportunities because this is a good team. I, I know what it was last year with the injuries. It's, it's not a throwaway year because no year is a throwaway year, but it was a year that was marred by injuries and, and, and things that caused problems up and down the roster and guys were put in positions where they, like you said, weren't in their best place chance to succeed, right. Or not getting what they needed or, or, or allowed to be who they needed to be. This year with you and C- and Cove in the starting lineup with Dame, CJ, Nurk, uh, with Mello coming off the bench, Gary coming off the bench, Ant coming off the bench, um, Zach when he comes back healthy, Cantor, you guys are a legit 10-11 deep team. How much is that going to matter for you guys? Not just on a night-to-night basis because of everything that's going on, but there's, there's got to be some rest factored in it. You guys are legitimately going to be playing a game almost once every other night for the entire season. I mean, it's great that we have, like you said, damn near a 10, 11 man rotation. Cause it's like, if one of us get in foul trouble, it's next man up. Like it, there's there, and there will not be no collapse. Like there's no lapse in the person that's coming in. If, if you, you come in, you bring the same amount of energy or you bring even more. Like that's, that's exactly how it got to be for us. All right, well, I'm going to let you get out of here on this one, Derek. Uh, I just want to say welcome to Portland. Uh, Team Mom, my, my, my former podcast uh, partner in crime, uh, she said she wanted to welcome you to the Rip City family, and she has a thing. Basically, when anybody new comes to town, she likes to track something. Uh, and Portland, they've been really, really bad at it. They've been bottom five, six in the league, really, for the past, I think, seven or eight years now in total dunks. So she, she, she wanted to let you know that she will be, in fact, be tracking your dunks uh, and making sure that you're bringing the, the team total up ever so slightly. <laughs> and listen, I, I hope you have a wonderful year. I hope you get settled in, that everything's good with, with the family and you guys all stay healthy and have a tremendous year. Thanks again for hopping on, man. Um, anything you, you've got to, you want to plug, your IG handle, anything you got, any shoes, go ahead and do it now. I'm good. You good? <laughs> All right, man. Get out of here. Get some rest. I know you guys got to get pra- get to practice, and you guys got a game in three days. So <laughs> get to it, man. You take care. All right. You too. All I hear, go get the money. So I go get it. Get it. Get it. Hate means I do something right. Right. So I'ma let them. I let them. Yeah, I'ma let them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'ma let them. I let them. I hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Yeah, I'ma let them. Yeah, let em. Uh-huh. All I hear, go get the money. So I go get it. Get it. Get it. Hate means I do something right. Right. So I'ma let 'em. I let 'em. Yeah, I'ma let 'em.